being near surface is what really gives us an advantage over everybody else. So you're, you're large, you're high grade, near surface, and in an area that wants development. We're just uh, over $7 US a pound uh, U308, which is very, very good. I mean, that's as low as anybody out there. We know what the work ahead of us is. Yep. Um, we do have interest on this project. You know, this is one of the, the best uh, projects out there. Hello and welcome to Crux Investor. Here today with Ross McElroy. He's the president and COO of Fission. Uh, you're also involved with Fission 3.0, but today right. we're talking Fission. Right. Fantastic. Kick off with a one minute overview for people new to the story of Fission, please. Okay, so Fission Uranium, uh, we're obviously in the name, we're a uranium company. We're focused in Canada's Athabasca Basin. It's a one project company, so mm -hmm. we are all about the PLS project in the southwest side of the basin. Mm -hmm. We have a, uh, a fairly large um, uh, and high grade deposit uh, that we discovered back in 2012. We've been able to, through drilling over the years, expand it to about 135 million pounds. Um, most of the majority of that is indicated and that's allowed us to advance the project through to uh, uh, pre-feasibility study, which we recently completed. So we're a, a project, you know, on the pathway through something to hopefully production somewhere down the road. Fantastic, thanks for that. So you're on the pathway, like a lot of uranium companies. Yeah. It's a bit of a roadblock happening at the moment well, in the market. People yeah. sitting around waiting to find out what Mr. Trump and the 90 Day Working Committee are going to do. Right. So whilst you're waiting and there's an inertia in the marketplace, what are you doing as a business? I mean, so beginning of the year, I guess, high hopes. Yeah. This could be the year. Yeah. Hasn't kind of worked out that way yet. Uh, so what are you having to do? How are you adjusting the way that you thought you'd have to behave and how are you actually having to react now? I suppose. I mean, I, I guess we're always optimistic. We know that the, uh, you know, the uranium story is really a matter of, of when. It, it is not a question of if. We're, we're all pretty sure of that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, for the last several years, nobody's been able to, uh, to peg that, uh, that, that real turnaround. We, yeah. we believe it's coming. So we've always had the mentality that, you know, we're still progressing the project, moving it forward, going through the steps. I mean, we're we're a story that wouldn't be in production anyways until 2026. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of room yet for things that we have to do ahead of time, mm -hmm. anyways, um, including you know building up the economics, uh, getting the the permitting and regulatory side in mm -hmm. order, so that we are a ready story once the the market turns you know turns and and hopefully we'll be at the position where this project's ready to go. You know at that right time but um, you know we've been very very careful in the last couple of years we've uh, reduced our spending um, on, on the project as far as uh, on the exploration front mm -hmm. and really just focusing on the guts of it and that's a triple R deposit that's what we've been moving uh, forward to and, and you know we're we watch our spending in this environment okay so let's talk about some of those things a few things you mentioned there sure. was, uh, Pre-feasibility study right. has been done, so you spent some money on that. Yes. So why don't we talk about that, and then we'll come back to them some, some sure. of the other things. Okay, so um, this year we've actually completed two pre-feasibility studies okay. because the first time we looked at this project, uh, the first way was as an open pit mm -hmm. and then evolving into an underground operation. And, and the reason that we would is because it's near surface, and generally if you have a, a near surface high grade deposit, or even low grade for that matter, uh, an open pit is generally the way to go. Um, for us, the challenge uh, would be that you're, you're in an environment where there is lakes around there, so we would have to build a berm wall. Um, certainly technically viable, but it's expensive. What, so is, the, what is that? It's it's a because an open pit you you need to hold back the lake so it doesn't flood your uh, mm -hmm. flood your operation. So we'd have to build a, a curtain basically a berm curtain around the working of, of the of the open pit mine. Right. And that's how we based our um, our first pre-feasibility study and it came back quite positive but with a with a capex that was fairly high at about 1.5 billion dollars. Right. And so this uh, spurred us to look at other options, you know, what what might be a better way to go would be as an underground mine where we could avoid all the earthworks involved and still 
access the ore and you know look at it look at it that way. So right. that was really what the pre feasibility was done in the last half of this year. Right. We just completed it, just filed the uh, the report on CDAR, and you know I'd say that the the main takeaways is that it really has substantially reduced the the capex uh, that's required to bring this project forward. We still um, are would be a very low cost operator, and um, you know so that, that and because the footprint was is much smaller uh, was just you know putting a portal in rather than than excavating. Uh, you know, the so, tell, so tell us about some of those numbers. Yeah. So you, it's, it's was 1.5 billion. That's right. So now, now what is now it? Now we're looking at around 1. Point, just under 1.2 billion. So you're with you're saving around 300 million dollars in cap. Right. And that's, okay. that's quite substantial. It is. It is substantial, but it's still quite a big number. Oh, it right? is still a big number. Okay. So and those conversations are being, I guess, being had all the time in terms of how would you go about financing this. Right, yeah, for sure. Now, I think that you know, for us, we're backed, uh, you know, first of all by by a major utility, and that's uh, one of the Chinese mm -hmm. uh, utilities, a state-owned enterprise, uh, CGN. Mm -hmm. So it's CGN Mining that has a twenty percent interest in our company. They invested in us in two thousand and sixteen, mm -hmm. so four years ago, almost. Um, and and we also have an offtake agreement with them, so you know they might they would obviously be a you know a pretty big uh, strategic you know back end I think that would help us through. At some point, you know we we hope to bring in other strategic partners right. probably. Um, you know we'll see see how we go. We're still a long way yet before we need that substantial capital, but mm -hmm. obviously you're right. We need to be. You know, considering it, but I think that uh, strategics would be an important part of it. So this. they would follow their money. And you'd look for them to come in at asset level, presumably, rather than Twaco. Well, Is that? I mean, have you had those sorts of levels of detail? I know it's a far out, uh, but yeah, we you got we, to start. We're starting. You know, yeah. we're starting to look at that, and, and they're you know, and hopefully we could bring in a major mining company as well. Right. Uh, you know, one of the, you know, there's the list is not that long on on, on who those majors are in this business, but. Um, you know, I'd say between that and having CGN as, as a backer, I think it's just important to bring in other big players mm. into this type of project because this is a big project. It, it, it absolutely is a, yeah. it is a big project, as you yeah. say. It's relatively shallow compared to some, so the economics should be good. So can, what are the other numbers that you've that have come out of the Right, process? so I think that the uh, what we've seen in both the, the pre-feasibilities, both the open pit and the underground, very low cost operators. So uh, in the case of the pre-feasibility that we just completed underground, mm. we're just uh, over $7 US a pound U three oh eight, which is very very good. I mean, that's as low as anybody out there. So mm -hmm. it's, um, I think that that's one of the measures uh, in there. That and between the the savings in, in the capex, the other numbers are you know very positive IRR and uh, and NPV. So you know we're looking at uh, a very robust project. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but th but they, this wouldn't go into production for another what five years. Right. I that mean, that sort of number. Yeah, Maybe we'd be longer? looking at 2026 before this would be uh, a project that would go into production. Right. So let's look at some of the other numbers here. At the moment, share price gone from 60 to say 30. Yeah. Uh, at the moment, so like a lot of other uranium uh, players, because of uncertainty in the market. But that's obviously had an impact on your market cap. You've been burning through cash. You've got some cash left, but you're going to have to go out to market sometimes. Saying I think the market knows that you know that so yeah. you know is that you think that's you're not getting fair value because of that or because of what's happening with the uranium price uh, probably both right. you know I, I think that certainly the the malaise in the uranium sector overall is uh, you know have has had a great dampening effect on on the the share price yeah um, people realize that we you know we obviously will need capital to go forward um, but we're we're uh, you know, cutting costs everywhere that we can. Uh, you know, there's some substantial reductions we're, we're doing internally to make sure that our runway is substantial. You know, as long as we can. What are you cutting? Uh, well, GNA. Uh, we're cutting substantially. We're you know. What was I mean? From what to what? I mean, have you got targets you've set yourselves? How do you go about doing something like that? Yeah. Well, we're we're kind of doing internal reviews right now as right. we speak. So 
you know, it'd be a little unfair to quite say what the numbers are, but they're substantial. You so tell us in the new year. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Okay. So, you, but, but you 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 are setting yourselves targets. You understand the need to cut. Absolutely. Your, uh, that's you not, know, not the, lost the, on you. No, it's not lost on us. And what we really want to see is that we have uh, a pretty good runway for the next year, year and a half. You know, right. that, that's really what we want to uh, see ourselves. And do you leave from the front? I mean, we're we taking salary cuts. We're we taking. Mm -hmm. how, are you changing the way you remunerate yourselves? I mean. Are you looking at all yeah, of the above? Yeah, we're, we're looking at everything. That's right. right. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. So Pretty holistic view of, of, of the whole thing. We're, we're really hunkering down, yeah. and yet we still want to be able to advance the project and keep it going. So um, right now, we're, uh, maybe to preempt that, that question, is, is that we're, we're into the, the permitting stage too right now. We're, we'll be submitting what we call a project description. Uh, it's a technical... Um, Term that, that that allows us to basically open the books with the with the regulators, the CNSC. Right. Um, that'll be submitted in the first <coughs> quarter of 2020, uh, and completing our baseline environmental work and community relations stuff because we know that ultimately, 12 to 14 months out from where we're at right now, we'll be under in, an environmental impact uh, right. study. Okay, so that, that kind of interests me. And I do want to come back to share price, because if you're yeah. going to raise money, your share price is half of what it was at the beginning of the year. It's more expensive for you right. now than it perhaps would have been at the beginning of the year. That's, that's yeah. obvious, yeah. right? Um, but we'll come back to that. So with, with regards to, you said we have cut back on expiration, we're focusing on the core asset, triple R, right. and we're, PLS, as you call it. we're moving that forward. And anything associated with that, we are going to move forward. Uh, have you kind of reduced the speed at which you're going to move forward or the amount of money you spend on moving that forward? I mean, how, how, does, how does the board think about managing its limited resources w right. w when there's currently no end in sight? We, and I do appreciate it's a, it's a when, not if yeah. scenario, but yeah. even so, you don't know when the when is. No yeah. one does. Yeah. Uh, so how, how do you manage your spend, time, focus on, on the you know, triple R? Well, a, a lot of the costs are, are, you know, a lot of the work we're doing right now are not uh, really high cost. You know, right. They're more time sensitive than they are cost. And okay. that would be the, the permitting, for example, right now. It's, it's not a big ticket item, but, yep. it's, but it takes, you know, that takes a, a period of about 12, 12 months to, mm. you know, get us ready for the EIS uh, mm. portion of it. So it's more time related. So mm. we, we work on, on submitting that, as I say, in, in the first quarter of the year. We would like to uh, embark on our um, feasibility studies, which is the next level of engineering right. study. Um, you know, we're we're not do quite. Do you do there. that? Do you do that? Because there's a cost there. There's a real cost to that. Well, th there, there is a cost there. You know, it, I mean, it'll take us uh, probably about you know somewhere in the order of five to six million dollars to yep. uh, you know in order to advance that study. So, so do you hold that back? I guess the question. Well, like, do you hold that back a bit? We'll or do you got a bit more certainty? Yeah, we, obviously we, we need to have have some some a bit more money in the in the treasury to, to go uh, forward on that. So, right. You know, okay. we're, we're we're conscious of that, and uh, you know that, that that's the reality that we're under. But I think we we do have some pretty good interest in you know. Yeah, we'll, we'll do what's right for the for the project and for the shareholders. And presumably, there's there's not is there much happening on the ground at the moment? Because it, again, no. you, you employ people, right? Right. And are they on a kind of contract basis? Can you turn the on, turn the tap on and off? As a, yeah, as a matter of fact, they are. Most people are on a contract basis. In the field, there's really nothing going on there mm -hmm. right now. It's um, you're also between a, between seasons. You know, yeah. we may have some drilling uh, in in the winter coming up. Which of course would be dependent on on uh, you know some financing that that we might be able to secure in, in the meantime. Right. But um, but right now there really aren't a lot of costs going going out the door there. The the camp is in a you know I mean care and maintenance I guess you could say right now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, meanwhile, okay. but the other work, the community work, the 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 permitting and regulatory work that's ongoing. That's a necessary part of the equation to, to keep this thing. You're going. obliged to do those things. Well, though, right? you're, you're obliged, but it also keeps us on track with the with the timelines that that, that I've given you uh, already. That's what's necessary to see this thing ultimately as a producer in 2026. These are steps that we have to be taking right now. So that there are there's some red lines where you say, and we're not going to cross. We're not going to hold back co uh, spending on those things because. We want to hit that 2026 exactly. time. We want to be known as a company that 
is going to do that. Exactly. Okay. So let's come back to the money yeah. then. So between now and then, you're going to need some capital. So there's yeah. two ways of doing it usually. Get it all while you can, yeah. whatever the cost, or do you, do you take it in increments? What's the board decided to well, do? Well, we're, we're looking at, at the whole thing, uh, to, to be honest. But um, I think for us, what looks to be of interest is, is uh, probably bringing in a strategic uh, in there rather than just, you know, we're very careful okay. to be too dilutive right now in this price bargain. We don't want to do that. What's that mean? Because strate- you've got a strategic in there We right do now. have a strategic, yeah. So what and there are others that, that are that are interested. So, right. you know, that, that would be something where they could earn it an interest for, you know, a, a, for an investment. We'll okay. Say. And what level do they come at? You, you, don't, you don't want to be dilutory or you well, may have to be? Well, I mean, you, how, how do yeah. you do it? You want, well, you want to be pretty careful. So we're, we're looking at at options. You know, there's not a whole lot I can tell you right now on that mm. front, except that we are, you know, I think we're, we're advancing, you know, in, the, in this level. So you got some options on the table, having some discussions. No. Another thing you're going to tell me in the new year, maybe. Well, <laughs> well, it will. I mean, this is this is the, the time period that yep. we're at. So we know what the work ahead of us is. Yep. Um, we do have interest on this project. You know, this is one of the, the best uh, projects out there. I, in my mind, you know, uh, by far one of the best in the Athabasca Basin. I think a lot of people would agree yeah. with you yeah. about the quality of the asset. What I'm trying to get at is a sense of what's the management doing right now? Because it's tough. It, it's, it's tough, yeah. right? It's no, no one's finding this easy. It's a balancing act. It's a balance. How do you manage the money? How do you focus on what you do? Yeah. How do you keep the, the ball rolling yeah. um, to be able to deliver against whatever expectations yeah. the market has? Yeah. So I, I, I get it. It's real tough. But the decisions are made by the board and I'm trying to get a sense yeah. of, of, from you what the board is talking about, what's keeping them awake at night, that usual question. Well, the, the board you know. wants us, you know, management wants it, the board wants it. I think we're all aligned in the same way. We want to make sure that uh, that we're viable a year out, you know, a year and mm. a half out. And so we're really controlling the spin, watching G&A uh, and cutting back where we can so that we do have that that uh, that right. time ahead of us. Right. So, so it must be frustrating having to talk about. Well, it must be frustrating. It's full stop with the market doing what it's yeah. doing, right? Because that's out of your control. Yeah. You ain't got you ain't got a say in that really. Um, but what you can do is react to it. And I think you can have some yeah. clues as to yeah. what you're doing. So that's, thank you for that. Yeah. Um, that's that said. When it, just on the just finish off on the money thing. Right. It's expensive to raise money at the moment with a share price half of what it was at the beginning of the year. Correct. Yeah. So that's that can't be a good feeling. Well, it, yeah. Of course, it, of course not. And we're uh, we're not prepared to to go uh, too heavily in, into uh, you know a, an, an equity type uh, investment. You know, at that thirty cents. Yeah. You know, the, no one wants to do that. No. No one wants yeah, to do that. Okay. No. But yeah, yeah, you got to you got to play the hand you're dealt, right? So we right, do. okay, yeah. um, okay. So so why don't we get into um, some of the project itself again for okay. probably for people new to this because there will be people new to this yeah. uh, certainly from our followers and subscribers. So yeah. tell us a bit about this asset, which people do think is quite a good asset. Sure, yeah. I mean, what makes this really unique is that we're outside of the Athabasca Basin margin. Mm. We're in the southwest side, so. Uh, it's it's pretty virgin territory you know when we made our discovery back in 2012 we were really the first deposit of any size or merit to to have uh, a, a discovery like that and so um i think what's key here is we're all in basement rock we're outside of the athabasca basin so we don't have the problem with what they normally think of as unconformity mm-hmm. so you don't have the uh, the water problems that you would have at a at the unconformity contact, that would mm-hmm. be the Cigar Lake, um, MacArthur River deposits. This is strictly a basement hosted mm-hmm. deposit and being near surface is what really gives us an advantage over everybody else. So you're, you're large, you're high grade, near surface uh, and in an area that wants development. So I'd say the, the other important aspect here too, I think we've already shown geologically, we're showing it with economics. Um, the, the regulation side, the, the, the permitting is, is taken care of. And I think the next step that we have to bring the project forward is the community level, First Nations mm-hmm. and communities. So that's another area that we're actively working on all the time yeah. because they have as much input as whether a project goes forward or not as any uh, regulatory body. 
And that's interesting. I noticed when you're talking about cutbacks, that was not one of the things you were cutting back on. But again, it's more right. uh, it's more relationships, it's discussions and updates. Right. It's not okay. really a, it's not a money issue at this point. It probably is down the road when you sign impact benefit agreements. But what you need to do is spend the time, the effort, mm. meeting with the uh, the communities, with all the local heads, getting okay. them on board, letting them understand what the project's all about, what the potential spinoffs are. So yeah. that's. It's an effort of time more than, than money as well. Interesting, interesting. So the, the, tell us a bit about the project, because again, you've, you've talked about the new yeah. PFS. Yeah. You were going to be open pit. Now you've potentially saved some money yeah. going, on, going underground. Correct. Is that, is that regular underground, or is that is it automated or autonomous in any way? Because that seems to be quite topical yeah. at the moment. No, yeah, it wouldn't be, wouldn't be autonomous. It would be, it would be regular conventional underground mining so um uh you know in in our case what we would have to do because we're near the uh the the top of the Mm. overburden and Mm. beneath patterson lake itself Mm. we have about a a 50 meter spread of of overburden and then you get into the into the mineralization so we would put in freeze pipes yeah that you'd install freeze pipes so you, you keep yourself an ice block layer right that that's the interface between the overburden and and the bedrock and that allows you to do underground mining there okay. but you'd still be uh, long hole stoping you know conventional uh, underground advancement and uh, you know this and and as we've demonstrated in the PFS still very very low cost right and, uh, and that's interesting so it's just conventional there's no, there's no nothing new going on here you're not nothing reinventing new. the wheel regular money and you're still achieving exactly. those sort of low level uh, costs yeah interesting yeah okay. so yeah no precedent setting uh, Mining and you know I find that pretty comforting to know that you know it's tried and true methods for mining uranium in, in the in the basin yeah. with the advantage being uh, de-risking because of the shallowness nature yeah. you know the deeper deposits are the the more challenging they become the I guess you could the increase in in the risk level of you know, yeah. development so interesting okay and and um, just on the market briefly because yeah. there's obviously there's a lot of players and you've got the the, the canadian guys right yeah. you guys high grade and the Kazakhs high grade is great africa got a few interesting stories going there but it's pretty low grade it's yeah. bulk some pretty big numbers involved were required there too and the, the costs right. are very different profiles from yours aussies similar maybe a little bit higher yeah you know you know, who do you, who do you think the best of the rest are? If, if you're not inside the um, Athabasca Basin or Saskatchewan, what what do you? Where are you you're either in, you're either in Kazakhstan or you're in you're in Canada. Those right. are the, those are the you know after that it's it's a whole nother level down. You know, to be honest, the, the cost uh, curve just goes up so much higher for almost everybody else. So the lowest cost producers, obviously, the Kazakhs with mm. you know the large. Uh, in situ leach mm. mining operations in, in Kazakhstan. And and next in, in line would be the high grade Athabasca deposits. So um, they're all obviously the lowest cost curve. And once you get beyond that, yeah. uh, grade drops off significantly. Um, you know, uh, probably the other advantage Canada has is uh, political uh, risk is, right. is, is minimal. You know, I mean, you've got a government that supports it. Uh, I think everybody understands what you know, I mean, yeah. Canada is a first world mining uh, center and, and really nobody's enemy. So, right. you know, I think we're, we're a friendly environment to be able to export uranium. So do you think, okay, apart from grade, yeah. obviously massive factor, grade is king, hear that it, every, it every, every single conversation I have. Yeah. Um, what are the other inhibitors? You're saying, obviously you're saying jurisdictional, potentially there's some risk, but you know, I think Namibian players would go, we're very friendly, e- well, even the, the Niger, very friendly, but what were your concerns? Why why have you stuck with the Athabasca Basin? Uh, well, again, I, I, it, it hasn't come to fruition, but you, you never know on the U.S. side too what, what mm. restrictions may come down the road. You know, this was all part of uh, Section 232 and the you know yeah. the, the the 90 days, the 90 days, and 90 days. They're still reviewing, you know, who they will do business with and mm. who they won't, and I think. The, the Canadian doors will always stay open to the yeah. U.S. no matter what, right? You may, you know, who knows what, what restrictions may happen in other major producing locations, um, you know, because it's also involved with who those countries deal with, you yeah. know, who, who are they partnering with, um, you know, are they restricted uh, countries as well? But so Canada's in a, in a pretty good situation, at least uh, 
uh, in relative to, to the United States. So if you're investing, you're investing in Canada. Yeah. That's what I'm hearing. Okay, fine. Um, now, you mentioned earlier, you kind of rein back the exploration component. Very much. Because you've got to watch the pennies right now. Correct. Okay. Or the cents right now. Um, you do have this thing called Fission 3. Yes. Out there, which yes. I know you're on the board of. Yes. Right. What do you, what's your title? I'm a, a COO and COO I'm a director there. as well. Okay, okay. So you've got that. That's kind of your, I think it was originally set up as a kind of spin out exploration arm. Is that, is that right. roughly what it was? It pretty much is, yeah. Right, okay. And um, the, because we, we were looking at that as, as well before, yeah. before we met up, met up today. Obviously, they're going to have their own sets of problems. Are you going through the same mentality with Fission 3.0 at the moment? Because obviously their cash position is very, very different. That what they're trying to achieve is very, very different. Yeah. The timelines are very, very different. So in a way, can you hunker down a lot more easily with them? Yeah, a whole lot, lot easier. You know, in expiration play, you just either spend money or you don't. Right. You know, I mean, it's, a, it's pretty simple and straightforward. If you're exploring, hopefully you'll, you'll make a discovery and you know that changes your life overnight, right, with, right. A, with a major discovery. Um, yeah, and we did, in Vision 3, we had a, a pretty act of 2019. We were exploring several mm. projects and were able to advance uh, some of the, what I think are excellent targets at, mm. at the next level. So those are things that we'll do, you know, going forward in 2020. But yeah, you can cut the, the spending off on an exploration uh, project Okay, so I was just asking, you know, because is there any kind of liability or, or obligation on fission to support fission 3.0? And I guess from what no. you said, it doesn't really matter. No, yeah, not not in the case of, of, of that. You know, I, I'd say that there is obligation on on the fission side for the for the Patterson Lake property, the PLS property itself. You know, it it's, it needs to remain a secured yeah. uh, project. We do have inventory on on site. You know, so. It, you know, there is some ob ongoing obligations in there that you wouldn't ever see in an exploration project. Right. And so, you know, and with regards to some of the things that you're doing at Fission, uh, uranium, Fission yeah. uranium, like I say, there's some things you've got to do, yes. you're obliged to do. Yes. You, you're spending the money, but it's not having any effect whatsoever in terms of people's perception of the market, okay? Maybe in a normal environment, those things might work, but they're not right. having an effect at the moment. So. Is the reality for investors in uranium companies, not just fission, mm -hmm. this price discovery is the only thing which is going to change the fortunes of some companies? I think we all need to see a, a, you know, an increase in the price of uranium. There isn't any uranium company out there that, that isn't suffering for this, the same reason. We do all need to see a turnaround. We think it's happening and you know, it's been slow. I mean, the price of uranium, although still too low, it, it's about 50% uh, higher than, than its lows uh, you know, a year or two ago, mm -hmm. right? At $18, now it's $26. Um, yeah. it, it's moving in the right direction. It hasn't had the significant change yet that we think is, is coming. Um, I think everybody's hunkering down in this, in this sector. I mean, uh, really it's, also, it's also gone really quiet. Yes. There's not a lot of conversation yeah. from any of the uranium companies, yeah. CEOs, yeah. or fund managers who were very vocal pre-232, well, very yeah. vocal pre uh, the symposium in London, yeah. the uh, Nashville, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. I think now it's a case of well, literally waiting to see what's gonna happen, right? It, it kind of is, you know, I mean, section 232 was a non-event, essentially, you know. Um, yeah, did, you, we, did you think it should have been? We, yeah. who, who knows what, what it could happen, but I, I always sort of thought it would be a non-event anyways, you right. know. I, you know what it was. Uh, you know what, what was really going to change there. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, anyways, uh, you know, I, it has gone quiet. There's there's no question about it. And yet we also know that the demand side is growing. You know, we, we see it in in China. We see it in uh, in the Middle East. We see it uh, all over the place. The reactors. You know, the nuclear sector is a growth industry. Mm. Um, you're, Reactors are being built. There's more operating now than any time. Uh, certainly, uh, the numbers are higher now than they were pre Fukushima. So, and that was 2011. It's it's actually a, a growth sector. It's mm. just not reflected yet in in the price of the commodities. So the suppliers haven't caught up yet to the you know to the growth story. But that will change. Yeah. You know, at some point, and this is where everybody gets you know tripped up because they're trying to 
call that, um, you know, that, that change around time. And when it does change, it happens very, very quickly. We shall see. Uh, well, if history is a, uh, you know, any kind of a teacher, we, we see that turnaround very quickly in the uranium side. Yeah, I, I think you're right. I mean, I think the infrastructure buildup is billions and billions of dollars all yeah. around the world, from large reactors, small reactors, yeah. refurbed yeah. reactors. Um, th there's clearly a, a need for it. It's a question of, you know, where can companies figure out where they, f which cycle they fit into, where they fit into that cycle, you know, and how they, how they get into the marketplace. Um, but yeah, exciting times. Ross, appreciate your time today. Yeah. That was really honest insight. We appreciate, I'm saying a little bit about how you're thinking about this. It, it is tough at the moment for everyone, yeah. but you know, you seem to be well, making all the right moves. Well, we're, we're, you know, we're, we're trying, you know, we know we've got the project that merits it. So we're, we're trying to manage that, uh, that cycle as best we can. Beautiful, thanks Thank for your you. time again. Thank you very much. Thanks very much for watching. We hope you enjoyed that. And, and if you did, please click the button in the corner of the screen to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also catch us on our website, cruxinvestor.com and Cruxcast, our podcast series. Plus most days you can catch us on LinkedIn and Twitter. We'd love getting your feedback, so please keep that coming and we'll speak to you again soon.